Hi, my name is Leonor Colbert. I'm an emerging full stack web developer and I'm a student in Flatiron School's online software engineering program. Today, I'm introducing you to Cookbook Community, one of my portfolio projects. Cookbook Community is a web application made with Sinatra uh, that allows users to create an account. And once they have an account, they can create their own recipes, update and delete their own recipes, and also view other users' recipes and save them to a collection that we call the user's cookbook. In this video today, I want to give you a quick look at the models and how they are associated in Active Record, and then a walkthrough of what it actually looks like to sign up and navigate the web app. So here we see a diagram of the models in this web application and how they are associated. The main models that we have are users and recipes. So users have many recipes that they have created and recipes belong to the user that created them. We also have the saved recipes which is basically just a join table that has the recipe ID and the user ID. Uh, and that allows the users to both have many recipes that they create and then also have many recipes through saved recipes. And also recipes belong to one user, but they also have many users through saved recipes. So when a user actually visits this web application, they're going to first come to this landing page, which is an about page. It has some information about the app. And because no one is signed in right now, you're going to see the navigation bar at the top has the option to sign up, to log in, an uh, external link to a blog post describing how this app was made, a link to this video, and then also a link to the GitHub repository for the code. Let's create a new account and sign up. The HTML for this program, uh, for this form, has required patterns. So in addition to the prompts telling the user what characters are permitted, uh, there's also going to be a flash message that if the user tries to sign up with invalid credentials, uh, the HTML is going to prompt them to correct that. For instance, uh, entering an email address without an at sign. In addition to that, once they actually submit those credentials, they're going to be validated by Active Record, making sure that the username and the email are not already in use. So let's create a quick example account. Let's just call it Portland. And we're going to say it's Portland at Gmail and create this new account. And so if Active Record is successfully able to persist that user to the database, they are going to be logged in by setting that new user's ID to the session uh, hash and then redirected to the index. And the index welcomes the user by name. So we successfully signed up. It says welcome PDX. And here we have the list of all recipes listed alphabetically. Now, if that list were really long, uh, you might want to browse just by type. So we can select just desserts and view what recipes we have that are tagged as dessert. And let's check out brownies. So on the recipe show page, we're going to see the recipe's name, its ingredients, directions on how to make it, the type that's been tagged as, and who created it. Now, if we follow this username hyperlink, it's going to take us to that user's show page, which shows a list of just the recipes created by that user. Now, because we did not create this recipe, the only button we're going to see down here is the option to add it to our cookbook. Everyone loves brownies, so let's, let's go ahead and add that to our cookbook. And once we add it to our cookbook, again, we're just adding that to our user's saved recipes. So here we are in our cookbook. We have brownies, uh, but let's go ahead and add our own recipe and start contributing to the community. Now, because we are signed in, you're going to see the navigation bar has changed. Instead of having sign up and log in, we have the link back to all recipes. If we want to go back to the index, we have a link to our cookbook. We also have the opportunity to create a recipe, view the about page, or log out. So let's create a new recipe. And let's just create a simple salad. And it has some greens, some toppings, dressing, and pretty easy to make a salad. 
So we've inputted the name, ingredients, and some directions, and we've selected a type. Now all of these fields are required. Uh, so if the user tries to create a recipe with any of these fields missing, when Active Record tries to persist that recipe to the database, uh, it's going to fail because it validates the presence of all fields. And so the user is going to be redirected back here and told what they're missing. Now let's create that recipe. And if you filled everything in, your recipe is going to be successfully saved and you're going to be redirected to viewing that recipe. So here we can see the recipe that we just created. And when we create a recipe, it's automatically added to our cookbook of saved recipes. So before this button here said, add to my cookbook. Now, because it's already in our cookbook, it's going to say remove from cookbook. Because we created this recipe, we also have the ability to edit and delete the recipe. And just like creating the recipe, you're not going to be able to edit a recipe to have any empty fields. You're going to get kicked back onto the edit page and instructed that all fields are required. Uh, so now if we look into our cookbook, we're going to see that we have two recipes in there, the brownies that we added from another user and our own salad. And that is sort of a brief overview of how this website functions. It's pretty simple, but for something that was created using pretty much just HTML and CSS, no JavaScript or anything like that, I'm pretty pleased with how everything functions and that it's pretty user-friendly and easy to navigate. Uh, and so that is Cookbook Community, my Sinatra portfolio project, and thank you so much for checking it out with me today.